If all you know about French wine is that the labels don't have pretty pictures, grab a bottle of Haute Cote de Bonne and buckle up because it's pocket wine school. <laughs> French wine can be daunting, but daunting can be delicious, and delicious doesn't have to be expensive. Hi, I'm Tommy, and right now we're talking about the first six French wine regions that you need to know. For starters, Bordeaux is not a style of wine, it's a place. So when someone says categorically that they don't like Bordeaux, I can only assume that the people of southwestern France have done something unforgivable to that person. More specifically, Bordeaux is a collection of smaller places, like a drunken matryoshka doll. In general, though, you only need to know three. The left bank, the right bank, and a place in between called Entre du Mer, which means between the two seas. Each one of these three places has its own identity, soil makeup, and specializes in different grapes. And speaking of grapes, some of the most famous grapes in the world come from here. Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, certainly but also Malbec and Carmenere. And if you thought Malbec came from Argentina, that's because Argentina is also in Bordeaux. Oh wait, no, that's not true. But the Malbec thing is, and those are just the reds. Bordeaux makes some truly excellent white wines from Sauvignon Blanc and another grape called Semillon. The wines can be dry, like this one, I drank some, and uh, they can also be as sweet as pie, like Sauternes. The region's best Cabernet Sauvignon comes from the left bank, where the gravel soils help this late developing grape get nice and ripe. But if your experience with Cab is mostly California, just know that Bordeaux Cabs are going to be a lot more herbaceous and earthy. Find a good Madoc or a Margot if you want to spend a little more, and drink it with some beef or duck or grilled vegetables, preferably while wearing a beret and reading some Camus. The French still do that, don't they? Man, I gotta stop watching cartoons. The right bank is better known for its Merlot and its Cab Franc, which can grow better on the cooler clay soils. Again, you're gonna get a lot of earth, which is great because that's where I keep all my stuff. The best wines to know here are saint Emilion and Pomerol. Entre du Mer is a little bit more flexible. You can find all three of the big reds here, although big red chewing gum is found in very few French shops. It's also known for some great whites, which would be an excellent setup for a joke about a shark, wouldn't it? Burgundy. It's not just a color anymore. It's also home base for Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, two obscure grapes found mostly in specialty shops. It's also known for a handful of other smaller grapes like Aligoté and Gamay, although in much smaller proportions. Burgundy, or Bourgogne, as people who are not not French say it, is long and thin, hello nurse. Consequently, it's divided up into four-ish smaller regions, each with their own characteristics, although they do specialize in those same two grapes. At the top, there's Chablis, which is all Chardonnay. But these are not butter bombs. In fact, you won't find butter bombs anywhere in Burgundy except on the snails. Chablis is lean and crisp, with an acidity that is described pretty much exclusively in wine texts as bracing. Below that is the Côte d'Or, which comprises two smaller sections, the Côte des Nuits and the Côte des Bonnes. Here is where Pinot Noir peeks its fragile little head out, and it's also where Pinot makes some primo vino. Want to spend some money? Get yourself a Gevry or a Charme Chambertin and let it age, just not out in the sun. Continuing down is the underrated Côte Chalonnaise, where you start to see not just Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, but also some excellent Aligoté and Gamay and some perfect bubbles in the region of Rulli. At the bottom is the Maconnet, which makes some of the most enjoyably drinkable Chardonnay you'll find. Puy Fuisse gets all the love, but don't forget saint Varan and Vire Classé. You'll even get a hint of butter here, but not enough to freak out your cardiologist. I will mention an ex-member of Burgundy that now stands on its own, Beaujolais. And I'm going to mention it because I want people to stop calling it Beaujolais. Boo? Stop it. Further south is the Rhone Valley, which comprises two sections, the Northern Rhone and the Southern Rhone. Note 
that this is the correct use of the term comprises. So if you use the phrase is comprised of, your English teacher needs to go to jail. The Northern Rhone is Northern known for one red and three whites. That one red is Syrah, which in Australia is known as Shiraz, based on some bad information, presumably gotten from a kangaroo. Syrah is, in fact, the only red grape allowed here, and stands out with black fruit and peppery goodness, especially in Cote Roti and San Joseph. By the way, if these names sound impossible to spell, I have laid them out in the descriptions below. Another subregion, Congrieu, focuses on Viognier, which is as big and bold as Chardonnay, but more floral than fruity, although it still keeps that in the same gift basket category. Also, look out for the other white grapes, Roussin and Marsan, especially if they're being thrown at you. The Southern Rhone is home to some much fruitier wines, and also to one of the most famous wines of all, Chateauneuf du Pape. And though that name makes it sound like an exploding house made out of foam, it actually means New Castle of the Pope, presumably because the pontiff is really into amber beers. Chateauneuf du Pape can be made with Syrah along with 12 other grapes. The real star here, as throughout the rest of the Southern Rhone, is Grenache. This grape can be big-bodied with moderate acidity, sort of like Jerry Garcia, and is known for its red fruit flavors and even some licorice. But a Chateauneuf du Pape can be expensive. A better starting point is Côte du Rhone. Just look for the term Côte du Rhone. It can be red or white, but always bet on red, as they say in Vegas, where I lost all my money. The Loire Valley is the birthplace of Sauvignon Blanc and Cabernet Franc, and home to Chenin Blanc, along with a host of other Ancs. Closest to the Atlantic Ocean, you'll find an excellent wine, Muscadet. Important. This is not to be confused with the sweet wines Muscato or Muscadine. Muscadet is made from the Melon Blanc grape and can be exceedingly dry. It also really craves oysters as it has a hot date tonight and is afraid of underperforming. Moving further inland, we find some excellent and fruity Cabernet Franc and Chenon, as well as some really incredible apple-like Chenin Blanc in Vouvray that ranges from dry to sweet to bubbly. Most famously, though, is the Sauvignon Blanc at the far right end of the Loire Valley in the appellations Sancerre and Puy Fumé. So if you are stuck on New Zealand, Pry yourself loose and try one of these. You won't regret it. Alsace is what France would be if it were Germany. At other times in history, it's been what Germany would be like if it were France. The grapes here are mostly white, sort of like Sweden, although some excellent Pinot Noir grows here as well. The big four grapes, also known as the noble grapes, are Pinot Gris, Riesling, Muscat, and Gewürztraminer. If the Rieslings you know are sweet, and the Pinot Gris you know is watery Pinot Grigio, do yourself a favor and drink some Alsace. Despite being super northerly, Alsace gets a ton of sun and very little rain, mostly because it is protected from clouds by the Vosges Mountains that separate it from Germany. That limited rain forces the vine's resources into the fruit instead of the vine's green parts, resulting in wines that, in my humble opinion, are some of the best in France. Finally, let's move to the south of France. And I mean that, let's, you and I, move to the south of France right now. I've already packed my striped shirt. Here is where we find Provence with its light grapefruity rosés and also the semi-Spanish influenced reds of Languedoc Roussillon. This was once a region for cheap, no-name wines, but has in the past few decades become known for some of the great wines at value prices. Look especially for Corbière and Minervois, and if you can't find them, check your other pants. And those are the six regions that newbies to French wine need to know. That being said, you could spend a whole lifetime studying French wine and never come close to mastering it. So crack open a bottle and start now. And if you'd like more videos to help you bring your wine knowledge to the next level, subscribe to this channel and maybe ring that little bell. And as always, rock out with your corks out.